here we are live on Facebook. Here we go. Aloha y como mai to the maiden voyage of High Amps Facebook Live. And my name is John Souza. I am the president of High Amped. I am a licensed marriage and family therapist, and it is really great to be doing this as an attempt to engage a wider audience, engage those that are already High Amped members, those considering becoming a member, or those who don't even know what an MFT is. That's what this is all about. So if you're watching this, you probably have some interest in marriage and family therapy. And what exactly is marriage and family therapy? That's a very good question. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share with you our website that will answer that question. So here is our Hawaiian Islands Association for Marriage and Family Therapy website. And we have this lovely couple on the beach with their children. And we have all kinds of things available here for you from find a therapist to hosting a CEU event and joining our organization. But what is a family therapist? Well, here's a blog that we've written about it. And it highlights specifically the benefits of working with a marriage and family therapist. But to answer the question, what is an MFT as we call ourselves? A marriage and family therapist or an MFT is one of the five core mental health professions in the United States as deemed so by the US Department of Health and Human Services. And that goes along with other folks you probably heard of such as psychiatrists, we're often medical doctors, clinical psychologists, we're often referred to as uh, psychologists or licensed psychologists, and of course, social workers uh, and psychiatric mental health nurses. And a marriage and family therapist specifically is a mental health professional that's trained and licensed to serve not just couples and families, but also individuals. And it's our unique training that goes beyond looking solely at the individual uh, as being the problem and instead, or in addition to, attends to the relational networks that might be surrounding that individual or informing that particular presenting problem that really makes us stand out. That's what makes us unique is we're, we're trained to look at relationships and we're trained to look at the context of the presenting problem. So for example, if someone comes in with depression we say, yes, we can see the depression from that individual's perspective. And we look at, well, what's going on in the individual's life? What are their primary relationships life like? What do they have going on with their partner or with their kids? Or maybe there's something going on at school or at, at um, work that might be informing that depression. Um, and that is really what differentiates us. So. Just like all the other core mental health professions, we are uh, trained to diagnose and treat mental health issues like depression and substance abuse and anxiety and all those kinds of things. Um, we have received special training in how to work with family dynamics that might be shaping or, or maintaining our well being. And we're skilled at addressing a wide array of relationship issues within the context of couples and families or the community. Uh, and so we really do apply a more holistic perspective to healthcare because we're really concerned with the overall long term well being of individuals, their families, and their communities. And at a minimum, a licensed marriage and family therapist will have a master's degree, although some, like myself, have a doctoral degree. And that can be specifically in marriage and family therapy, or some people get a degree in, in something else like. Uh, mental health counseling or psychology and they will opt into additional training to be able to qualify for that LMFT, the Licensed Marriage and Family Therapy designation. So that's sort of uh, an overview of, of how we're trained, how we think about mental health issues. And when we look at marriage and family therapy in the context of all the other professions, we say that um, we see that a lot of uh, satisfaction comes from our clients. Uh, they tend to rate marriage and family therapists very highly because they really do uh, 
uh, appreciate us looking more at those relationships and uh, increase attention to not only emotional health, but also uh, their relational health. So I'll stop sharing now. Take a look at the chat here, see if there's anything going on. I don't see anything going on right now. So, well, what can I tell you? I've been an MFT for about, I've been training and practicing since 2007. Um, so about 12 or so years. Um, it feels like a lot longer, but what I can say is that the reason I entered this field because originally I wanted to be a researcher. And let me just tell you a little bit about myself because it seems to be what I know best and no one else is here for me to dialogue with. So I'm just gonna tell you how I got into the field of MFT and maybe it will help you on your path to possibly becoming an MFT or maybe it can give you some sense of normalization if you're already on that path. But I originally was, uh, in business. My undergraduate degree is actually in business administration. And uh, my grandfather had a PhD from the University of Hawaii at Manoa in industrial psychology uh, and organizational psychology. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to get this degree in business. And then I'm going to go get a master's degree in industrial and organizational psychology. And it sounded pretty cool because I kind of liked working with groups of people and, and I went to this seminar for industrial and organizational psychologists and I was bored to tears. I couldn't believe it. No, nothing disparaging against my IO psychology brothers and sisters. I, I think if you do that and you're into it, that's awesome because it's really helpful for our business organizations. For me, it was just too dry. And so I turned to clinical psychology. I thought, okay, I'll go into clinical psychology, but I wanna be a researcher. I wanna be the one in the lab and understanding and taking notes and doing statistical analysis. And then my wife and I, who my wife is also an LMFT, we were gonna to go to a seminar about this thing called marriage and family therapy as she was considering her next step after undergrad. And it was on marriage and family therapy. And I listened to this woman talk about the way that marriage and family therapists think and work. And I've had a pretty difficult life experience in some ways. My early childhood is characterized by what, by what some people might call complex trauma. And so I didn't know exactly how I was ever going to use that in my life. And marriage and family therapy started to teach me about how I might be informing my present day relationships and my experience. And then when I heard about how marriage and family therapists contextualize relationships and contextualize presenting problems within larger and larger uh, ecologies, if you will, or circles, it just made me think that, wow, this is the next logical evolutionary step in treating mental health issues. And I was sold. And so my wife and I enrolled in a program together, a master's degree program. And we actually went through the master's degree program together in the same cohort. And subsequently, I believe that they wrote a clause into their program where they wouldn't let couples go through the master's program together anymore. But that gives you an indication as to just how real it was for us. <laughs> I would say our master's program in MFT provided us with a lot of very expensive therapy, but we both got a degree out of it. So that was pretty good. And in that process, we really came to appreciate and love the idea that this profession, this MFT profession is really an opportunity to shift who I am and who we were. And so this is not just a job, a J-O-B. This is in fact, a lifestyle. Being an MFT is far more than just going to work and treating people on an individual basis. It is about you yourself learning who you are. Because if you're going to work with a family, well, you have to anticipate that some of your own stuff is going to come up. In fact, I would say that if you come from a family, it is guaranteed that your family of origin, as we refer to it, 
family of origin issues will come out in the therapy, meaning that you'll see something in a family you're working with, like maybe conflict between a mother and a father, or conflict between a parent and a child, that will remind you of the conflict that you grew up with. And marriage and family therapy gives you an opportunity to really understand yourself because that then will help you differentiate between what's your stuff that might be coming up when you're doing therapy and what's their stuff. And that way you don't inadvertently put your stuff onto them and start treating them as if they were your mom or your dad or your sibling. So I love marriage and family therapy. Uh, I think it's kind of unfortunate in some ways that it's marriage and family therapy because it can imply to some people that, well, one, we only work with marriages and families, and two, that if you're not married, that we can't work with you. And so some places, some programs have opted to refer to themselves as couple and family therapy, and that implies that we're, we're able to work with relationships of all kinds. Of course, we do work with individuals as well. And in fact, I would say we're able to handle individuals, meaning just a one-on-one -on -one situation, just fine. We have this added bonus of, and in fact, we tend to try to encourage the bringing in of other relationships, other family members, uh, or whether they're friends or, or, or people that are sort of your Hanai family. We want to work with them uh, because we think that our goal is to be brief. Marriage and family therapy tends to be brief, maybe uh, 12 sessions. Not that we can't do less or not that we can't do more. In fact, I've been seeing people for years because they come in during times of transition, uh, whether it's uh, the birth of a child or they go into adolescence or the death of a loved one. And so, I really think our, of our job as MFTs as being one of establishing relationships with families across time and with communities across time. So that way, MFT can be brief, yet it's also a lifetime endeavor, both for the people we work with and, of course, like I mentioned, for ourselves. Because this is one of the few professions, I would say, where you can make mistakes and actually get a promotion <laughs> and get better at your job if you're willing to reflect on yourself and take a look at what it is that's coming up for you that contributed to that error, that mistake. So I can't tell you how many mistakes I've made. I, well, I, I mean, it would be quite a lot. In fact, there's sort of an adage in uh, MFT whenever I'm teaching the foundations of family therapy, I give the numbers 10 and 1,000. And I'm borrowing this from one of my mentors, I think Michelle Levy. If she's out there listening to this, thank you so much for this little nugget of wisdom. So 10, 10 is the number of years that it takes the average marriage and family therapist to feel like they've seen most of what's going to come through their door. Yep, 10 years of training and practice to be able to feel comfortable. Now, that's not to say you're in a master's degree the entire time. The master's degree, the actual educational part takes about two, two and a half years doctorate degrees can take anywhere from four to six years. Um, for example, my master's degree was about two and a half years, and then my doctorate took an additional four years. No, I'm talking about the practice afterwards, because once you graduate with that degree that qualifies you in terms of the academics and education, you've got to practice. And there's a minimum almost in every single state, a minimum of two years that you have to be practicing after you graduate in which you're getting supervision by a licensed marriage and family therapist or other qualified mental health professional. That is basically helping you to learn to integrate your academics with the actual clinical practice. And that varies from state to state, but could be anywhere from 1,000 to 4,000 hours, depending on the state. Here in Hawaii, it is 1,000 hours of client care that will qualify you to become an LMFT spaced out over the course of two years. And in that two years, it's a minimum of two years, not a maximum, a uh, minimum of two years. And then you have to have 200 hours of supervision during that time. So 200 of those 1,000 hours should be being supervised with somebody. Now, the other number, 1,000, what's that number? Well, that's easy. That's 
the minimum number of mistakes that you will make in that 10 years as you're practicing to get comfortable with what's coming through your door. So I'm pretty sure that I have doubled that number by now. And I'll tell you, it's not easy sometimes making those mistakes. But I think that's one of the gifts of this particular field is it allows us to learn to hold ourselves, the parts of us that make mistakes, the parts of us that can feel like imposters, the parts of us that can feel ashamed for making mistakes. It helps us understand where those feelings come from. And rather than trying to see them as something bad that needs to be cut out from us, like some sort of an operation to take out some cancer, it's really understanding what are the underlying emotional needs of those parts? And what are the relationships surrounding me that are either making those parts worse, meaning that they're feeling needier, or what, what are the relationships surrounding me that actually can soothe those parts so that they feel accepted and loved and integrated into me as a being, as a whole person. So there's something for you. Uh, I'm realizing now that this is all being recorded and I'm going to look back at this probably and say, oh my gosh, what did I say? Um, but I do appreciate that you all have taken the time to watch this. And I don't know if anyone is watching this now, but I'm looking at the clock and it's been about 20 minutes. So I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and wrap it up now. And I'm going to invite you to visit our website at www.hawaiimft.org. And if you're not a member, please consider signing up. We have some really great benefits. We have an entire library of training videos that you would probably really benefit from watching. Everything from uh, how to do good research, as a clinician to how to have healthier relationships with people. And of course, we also have the benefit of being part of a community of MFTs. And soon we're gonna have a directory that will allow you to more readily connect with those MFTs that are also part of the organization. And we have student benefits. Uh, you know, you just let us know you're a student member and we'll talk about what we can do. Uh, we have the student level, we have the clinical member level, and we, of course we have affiliate levels. And those that are just interested in donating, uh, please feel free to do so on the website. So that's all I have for today. We're at the 20 minute mark. Again, my name is John Souza. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and the president of HIAMP. It's been my pleasure to share this time with you. And I hope that you will join us next Monday at the same time for another High Amp Facebook live transmission. Until then, ahui ho, aloha, and mahalo.